In this video, we're going to reduce this, what we normally haul around in our Forerunner, to this. And here is the reason why we need to do that. This is our latest adventure vehicle build, the Wanderbug. It's going to force us to greatly reduce the bulk and weight of the gear we bring along. How is all this going to fit into that? Short answer, it's not. Volume, and especially weight, should always be a concern no matter what kind of vehicle you're driving. So we think that many of you will learn a lot from this video. So as little as this thing is, we're going to have to take all this and reduce it down to its bare minimum. Within reason. So let's start with the bulky items. Tents, for, for example. Okay, so we've got about four different tents. The At Oz least. The Oz tent, like which is <laughs> the Oz tent, which is amazing because you can stand up in it. Uh, it's great for the dogs, lots of room. But there's no way we're going to fit it in here. Yeah, it's the, like the, five, six feet long. Uh, right? Or it's longer than that. Yeah. I think it packs down to like eight feet long and about that big around. And it weighs it's heavy. like forty pounds. There's no way. Yeah, that's not going to work. That's, yeah, that's okay. Up. So then we've got the canvas tent, which is really nice in cold like weather it. because it's got the wood burning stove. It's mm -hmm. spacious. It's amazing, but Again, it's just not practical. It's big and bulky. Yeah, and it packs down to size about like this, you know, and not it, gonna work. It's not gonna work. So these are our nylon tents, a couple of those. This is one, this is a two person. This is what we take when we are backpacking or canoe camping. This is uh, small, it's about seven feet long, about maybe four feet wide. Not um, good with the dogs. Not good with the dogs, not really good with us. I mean, we could sit up in it. But, it's, but I mean, if we just need a place to sleep. Then yeah, one thing that we enjoy uh, is a nice, cozy place at night to get away from storms and just to relax and, uh, and get away from the bugs. So we like a tent with a little bit of room, something that we can sit up in and move around a little bit. This one is another nylon dome tent. Uh, it's a little bit bigger pack than that one. Slightly. Slightly, but this has all the poles and stakes in it. Both of these do. Uh, this one, the footprint is like seven foot by seven foot and plenty of headroom for both of us to sit, stand up in. Enough sit room up, for sit the up dogs. In, stand up. Enough room for the dogs and enough room for a big mattress, which brings us to a mattresses. mattress. So for mattresses, I'm sure there's better options out there, but we don't want to have to go out and buy more gear. We're just going to try to use what we have. Yeah, yeah, and we've got plenty. Um, this is what we started out with. So these are our backpacking, canoe camping mattresses. Yeah, and we've had them forever. They're Thermarest. Thermarest. These blow up to be about an inch and a half thick, and they're really nice and comfortable. Um, they can pack down fairly well. They split apart once in a while when you're sleeping and you end up down in the dip. Yeah. But, I mean. <laughs> but they're, they're comfortable. They are. Um, there's, when we first started, like what, 30, 35 years ago, all we had were those really thin, some of you old timers will remember those really thin foam, the blue foam pads. That's all we had, man. It's about half an inch. And they didn't, they were worthless. And then Thermarest came out with those. We went with those uh, as soon as they came out and we've been really happy with them. But. There's more comfortable out there. Yeah, and lately, the past 10 years or so, we've been using an inflatable mattress, mm -hmm. which is absolutely fantastic. It's so comfortable. Yeah, and this is this is queen size. It fits in our uh, the tent that we're going to take, the big four-person tent we're going to be taking. You don't us. fall down in the V because yeah. there is no V. However, uh, if it pops when you're out in the middle of nowhere, you are we're kind of screwed we you're... ran into that down in georgia on the georgia traverse trail it popped in you're we, stuck we in ended a... up sleeping in the forerunner and the next morning we had to make a run to a town to a walmart and get a new one so now in the forerunner we always carry a spare tucked underneath the passenger seat another drawback from this is you have to have a pump to pump it up these once you uh, undo the valve they self-inflate well, and you can Pretty blow much. into them. Yeah, you blow into them too. But for this, you have to have a pump and, of course, some spare batteries because this takes a lot of juice to pump this bad boy up. But this is like four inches thick. It's nice. And the dogs yeah, feel like they're Yeah, it's really at home. comfortable. So, what do you say? 
Which one should we take in this one? Uh, we're going to have to take these, I think. Those? Okay. I was thinking more of this one. I go. I guess we're we're mobile, so we could get to a Walmart if we need to. Yeah, we're not going to sleep in that thing like <laughs> no. we did the Forerunner. You'll but, be laying on the. Rocks. Uh, my vote for now, um, unless anything changes, my vote's for this. Yeah. Well, we'll see. Okay. Next, let's talk about pillows. So we have full-size house pillows. Or we have these crappy little, terrible Thermarest pillows. Those aren't bad. They're old. They are old. They're We've junky. Had those forever. So if you have ideas of better pillows out there, let me know because I can't live without a pillow, a decent pillow, to get a good night's sleep. True, true. Um, these aren't bad. It's it's full of the same kind of foam they put in those Thermarest mattresses, little chunks of it. Probably the what's left over after they cut up the foam panels. Um, they compact down to a nice little size and, and there's no weight to them. So I like them better than Mary does, obviously. Um, another option that we've used a lot when we had to go super light uh, backpacking, canoe camping, is a cotton sack with our clothes in it. And that worked pretty darn good. And it saved, saved a lot of uh, bulk in it, the packs. It did save bulk and weight mm -hmm. but again a good night's sleep without a pillow is nearly impossible for me okay well so so your vote is for these full size no my vote is to find a different pillow that okay well in the meantime because uh, we only have a short period of time for our first trip in this little thing so uh, let's go with these and, unless we find something better send me your ideas yeah send some ideas on pillows all right, on to tarps. Um, I don't really have a strong opinion about tarps. Uh, you usually can tie knots and do your magic and it keeps the rain off of us. As long so. as it keeps the rain off, that's really all that matters. Uh, this is a, I think it's called the Roadhouse tarp. This is what we use with the Forerunner. One end of it attaches to the back of the Forerunner. So we have our kitchen area under the tarp and then it comes out. And I tell you what, it's it's big it's four people can sit under this very comfortably in a rainstorm uh, but as you can see huge um, we have no real way to attach it to this little no thing need. And no, no kitchen. need no kitchen yeah it's really big so we're gonna take this one I, I think this is like a 10 by 10 just big enough for us to get underneath uh, to cook and, and to enjoy the outdoors for a little while while it's raining uh, they all, no matter what tarp you choose, you're going to need some poles. You can't always rely on uh, trees being strategically placed in order to tie it up on. Uh, these are, these collapse down. They're very lightweight and they, I think they extend down, you twist them and they extend out to like eight feet tall, which is far more than what we need. But we've had these in rainstorms before and they hold up nice. So vote for this. Sure. And we'll have to take these two. On to sleeping bags. So sleeping bags, we have these down sleeping bags that we've had forever. We're not going to buy new ones, so this is what we're going to go with. They're warm. They're lightweight. Yeah, they're rated at, I believe, 20 degrees or so, which is fine um, if we're going to be in, in higher elevations or, or colder uh, times of the year. We'll take a wool blanket with us. But uh, when we're traveling in this, since there's no heater in this darn thing, we're not gonna do winter trips in it. So these will be fine. Uh, yeah, they're, they're down north face. We've had these forever and ever. Uh, they, they're holding up fine. They're rectangular, so they zip together. Uh, they make a really nice bed. And other than being super, super comfortable, the best thing about down is they compact down to this size. I've got both our sleeping bags in this one bag. It only weighs, what, three, four pounds? If that, yeah. Yeah, so these are ideal for what we're intending for them to be in this little thing. Next up, chairs. Well, I think you can see uh, a huge difference what we have here. Yeah, yeah. So we have a wide variety of chairs. Uh, just to name a few, we have one that 
folds out into like a hammock chair. This thing, oh, this is the most ridiculous chair. No, Mary got this. It's so comfortable and fun. Uh, no, but look at it, it weighs maybe, I don't know, 15 pounds, that's out. Yeah, well, we can't take it with us, but it's not it's, out. It's I mean, kind of so. nice, but. Okay, and then, then we have these chairs, which are nice because yeah, they have are, the table on the side. And these are our go-to chairs. Uh, these go with us all the time in the Forerunner. But as you can see, they are heavy and bulky chairs. So we've now, got these. Now these, they look, they don't look all that comfortable, but they really they are. They are, they're more, much more comfortable than they look. Um, even though you're close to the ground, mm -hmm. it's comfortable. Yeah, it's a little harder for us to, old people to get up that far, but. Speak for yourself. Look at how little they are. This is, this is a chair in here, and one it's, of those chairs. And it doesn't weigh hardly anything. So so lightweight. So these are the ones we're taking? They're the ones. They're the ones we're taking. All right, on to tables. So tables are a nice to have, but not a need to have. Um, if if we're not camping in a campground, which we usually, we usually aren't, aren't um, but, uh, it's it's good to have a table. Mm -hmm. There are no picnic tables out in the wilderness. So. Yeah, and it keeps your food from getting, getting dirt in and, every, and all that. Uh, they're convenient. Um, this, it, we've got three different tables. Uh, this is them uh, packed up, as you can see, and this is when they're assembled. So I love this table with our Forerunner, but with the chairs we're taking, that's never gonna work. Yeah, because and, and this is the biggest, bulkiest packed down uh, table that we have. So yeah, uh, it's got a nice hard top where you can actually cook on it and put and plates it on it. wipes down nice. But yeah, it's, it's way too big for us. So these are equally small and lightweight. They compact, and, compact down about the same size. Yeah, and this one's obviously the lighter one, but it's also very flimsy. You can't yeah. really put drinks on no, here. No, that's why they have a drink they, holder underneath, But I that's think. not convenient. No, it's not as awful. <laughs> We, yeah, we've used that quite a bit. Yeah, so this one is my obvious choice. It's got a nice yeah. hard surface it's got on top. It's a hard top. surface like our big blue one had. Uh, compacts down, like I said, about the same size. This isn't bad. However, I have a better idea. Instead of Instead of taking a table with, we'll just use this. This is a front runner box. Uh, this is what we normally store our gear, haul our gear in. So I think that we could just use the top of this. Because uh, it's already in. We've got gear packed in it, and it'll save us from taking along a, a table. That's true. And it's down towards the ground where our chairs are. Food smells if we spill on it. We'll have to keep it clean. Yeah, well, of course. <laughs> I'm always clicking clean. Clicking clean. We'll do that too. But yeah, I think, I think that... Uh, a box like this will work nice. It'll work. I don't want to carry around extra stuff no, that we don't need. No, exactly. If we can do something, get a dual purpose out of something, I think we're, we're miles ahead with that. Sure. Okay. So this is going. Well, it's going anyways. That's, that's the point. We're going to have this along anyways, hauling gear, so might as well use it as a table too. Might as well. Next, on to lanterns and flashlights. Yeah, we're not uh, big lantern people. No. Um, we would much rather have a nice dark campsite so we can actually see the stars and, and animals and such. Um, we find that bright lights at night camping are kind of a nuisance for us. Uh, so there's all kinds, of, we have, this is probably one of five or so of this type of lantern that we have. That I don't we, know how we keep getting them. I don't we know. We keep but, winning them or yeah, something. Yeah, something. We never use them, but I mean... Well, when the lights go When the power home, goes out at home, that's the only time we ever use a lantern like this. What we use is... We have these... We have another one, too. These are Lucci, Lucy lights, something like that. And it's there's a little solar panel on the back. We just put this on the dash during the day, charges up. And this is all we really need. The other one we have uh, is colored lights and you can switch it to whatever color you want. And then you can- Or multiple colors. Yeah. yeah, if we're in a place where there's a fire ban or something, we can't have a campfire, we'll take it and put it out on the ground as our campfire and just stare at it while it changes colors. I know it's kind of, but what's really kind of cool about this is it packs down to nothing. And they float if you're in the water. Yeah, yeah, and they float too. They were really good with uh, canoe camping. Yeah. 
Oops. Oh, they flash too. They flash. How do you turn it off? Just there we go. Um, and just a flashlight. This and a flashlight, and that's really all we need. Uh, this and is. A, and a chair. And a chair. And the ashtray. And this ashtray. That's all I need. This chair and this ashtray and this flashlight. That's all I need. Is this chair, flashlight. <laughs> All right, whatever, you get the idea. But yeah, this is kind of cool. It's got a magnetic base. Uh, these are our shop lights, um, shop flashlights. We have a couple of them. But yeah, magnetic, you can put them on side of the car, kind of. But yeah, these are really nice, rechargeable with a USB. So this is really all we need for light. And we tried a candle lantern, one of those neat little candle lanterns that you unfold. and. We try, but we realized that that's not a really good idea to have in a nylon tent. So, especially not us. <laughs> yeah, especially as clumsy as we are. So this is what we're using. On to the kitchen stuff. The biggest piece is the stove. Yeah, this is what we've been using forever. As you can see, it's kind of it's kind of beat up a little bit, but it works great. Two burner, um, regulates down to a little simmer. As far as drawbacks on this, as you can see, it's a little big and it you have to have propane tanks. That's, that five pounder right there is actually what we normally use on the Forerunner that gets mounted on the rear tire carrier. Um, and then you have to have this regulator tube to go through. So this is this is pretty big. It is. It's too big for the for the bug. Yeah. But it is nice in the Forerunner. Oh yeah, yeah. This is wonderful uh, to use in the Forerunner, but. We're going back to our backpacking days. Old school. And we haven't used this thing in a long time. And they don't even make this. No, they don't even make this model anymore. This is a MSR. Whisper light. Whisper light. Yeah, they make something similar to it, but it doesn't look like this. But this is a little tiny backpacking propane stove. It unfolds. And it's super, super light. There we go. You cannot regulate the temperature as good as you can with the big stove, yeah, but we can make do. Yeah, we'll make do. So this is it. We also have, uh, this is a butane canister that it uses that gets screwed on there. And to stabilize it a little bit better, we have this base that uh, you can put down underneath it and it gets kind of the legs attached to it anyways. Uh, the problem with this is just a single burner, so we'll have to adjust our cooking methods a little bit to accommodate just a, a single burner stove. So we'll use um, pan cozies. They're like insulated yeah. uh, covers for mm -hmm. the outside of the pan. Yeah, what you do is you, you heat up, like, like if you're heating up some vegetables or something, you just heat it up a little bit and then put this insulated cozy around the pot and just set it on the ground or something and it'll stay warm for forever until you you know you get your main course done or something or other so yeah it'll work out we'll we'll just remember because we, we use this thing for years and years and years and it it's bomb proof <laughs> nothing has ever happened to it other than just uh routine cleaning that's all it takes uh but uh, yeah we're gonna have to remember just how we used it we used to cook full meals on this little thing believe it or not so we'll, we'll just have to get back into that. Yeah, smaller footprint. Yep. So next on to the more novelty kitchen items, things that you uh, like to use once in a while, it's kind of fun to use, but don't necessarily need to have them. So starting with the bake packer oven. Nope, that's a reflector oven. Bake packer oven isn't out here, <sighs> which we don't need it either. <laughs> this is kind of a nice, it, you put it up against a fire and the fire bakes, uh, cookies and cakes and all kinds of stuff. We've used it quite a bit, but we don't need it. It does compact down into a flat, you know, perfectly flat thing, but. It, and it's it's really nice for bakeware. I mean, because you're if you're out for any length of time, you want variety and textures. Yeah, it, it is nice so that's to have really some cool. freshly baked bread but and stuff. But you have to have an open fire. Yep. You have to have wood. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. So if there's a fire ban, you're out of luck. Yep, so we don't need that this trip. Uh, next is the crock pot, which is fun um, in the Forerunner. We've done soups and beans and yeah, roasts beans. and chicken and spaghetti. Yeah, it, it's and kind of fun, you know, especially on uh, the long driving days where we just put something in here and, and let it slow cook for, you know, three, four hours. And by the time we make camp, you know, 
Supper's ready. Yeah, so that's fun. Not in this little bug. No, that and, would it, be. and it takes a lot of juice. It is a 12 volt, but it takes a lot of juice. And uh, yeah, we, yeah, yeah, we don't need that. Don't at need all. that. Not, with this. On this, not on this. Not with this one. Okay. Uh, we have the pie iron, which is lightweight and small, and it's fun. It's not lightweight or small. <laughs> okay. It, it is fun, though. It's fun. It, yeah, what it, for those of you who have never seen this, is, these have been around forever. But you put something in here, and again, you have to have an open fire, and then you put that in the, in the fire, and you cook whatever in there. But it's, this is very much a novelty item. Yeah. So okay. Okay, so if you want to talk about novelty items, on to this. This is, we got this, this is a, what, what do you call it, an induction? An induction. Oh, no, not induction. Con um, yeah, it is induction, right? Is that convection, what you call Convection, induction, convection. Yeah, something like that. Induction cooktop, yes. Okay. <laughs> we got it because this was kind of a, a popular thing for, you know, overlanders for a long time. Uh, not for a long time, for... A couple of years ago anyways so we got one to try it out see if we liked it no we've never used it we used it once in the house um the problem is you have to have a certain type of pan to use it yeah because it's it has magnetic. To be magnetic so a stainless steel pan won't work on here um and two uh it's just yeah yeah it's a 110 so you, you know you have to go through a uh, inverter in your vehicle and it burns a lot of uh, juice and quite frankly i, I think it's Big for and for bulky. us, for me personally, I think it's ridiculous <laughs> for taking camping. So uh, it does it doesn't heat up though. So that's one thing that was cool yeah, it about does. it. Yeah, it does yeah, not after heat you up. take your pan off, you can touch it and it's not hot other than a little bit of heat you get from the hot pan. But but uh, yeah, if anybody wants to buy an into a cooktop, <laughs> you know where you can get one. Now this this is a, a grill and a little portable um, fire pit, which we don't really need however uh, we camp a lot of times in places where there is no firing and instead of making a scorched spot on the ground we don't make a ground fire we always make a little fire in here in this so we don't leave any trace of us being there um, and it has the grill like i said we can cook burgers or whatever and it, and it folds down if i can remember how to do it it folds down small and it fits in its like own this, little canvas bag. Yeah, it's got bag. its own little canvas bag. And, and then you can bring it home and clean it up. Yeah, so I'm kind of on the fence with this one, whether we take it or not. Um, I guess it's all going to depend on where we camp. Yeah. If it's we're going to be camping in campgrounds, we really don't need this uh, at all. When do we camp in campgrounds? True. So it'll just be on a trip-by-trip -trip basis for this. We may take it, may not. I don't think we'll take it on this first trip, though. On to cutting boards. Yeah. We so we cook quite a bit and we use fresh uh, fruits and vegetables uh -huh. when we cook. So a cutting board is kind of necessary. It is necessary, but how about we use the smaller one? Huh? Hey, is that the one from our kitchen? Could be. And now plates and cups. Plates and cups, yeah, we've had these forever. Um, I'm not, I would prefer round ones because they would nest better. You know, you put the pots in the frying pan easier in round, but hey, it's what we've got and it, they work fine. So we'll make do with that. Um, sometimes if I don't feel like doing dishes, we just take paper plates and burn them. Yeah, yeah, then we, the, we use the paper plates to start a campfire. Yeah. And as far as cups go, uh, this, as you can see, these came as a set. This one here has a different one. That's got the blue one in there. We don't want that. One. The green one. So you see how they nest? So you get two cups. What well, we, actually. 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 We don't take the bowls along. We, in yeah. fact, we gave the bowls away. Yeah. Um, we use just a cup, like if we're gonna have cereal, We'll just use a cup. Yep. Yeah, in the morning because we like to get going early in the morning because fewer people and uh, the light is better for uh, video and, and, can and uh, pictures. So we'll uh, have our coffee in here, put some cereal and milk in here, and... Uh, hit the road. Hit the road. Frying pans. Out of the frying pan into the fire. Yeah, well, um, our go-to has always been cast iron. 
we use them in the house too. Uh, we have every size imaginable. Um, uh, they, it, it's superior cooking. Yeah, they cook so thing. evenly and perfectly but crunchy. This thing is, whew, it's heavy. There's a lot of weight to it. And the handle is a nuisance for packing. Um, we've had this since our backpacking days and I hate it. It yeah. doesn't cook evenly. No, it's, it's stainless steel, MSR uh, brand. And it does have a removable handle. So, yeah, so it packs and nests better. But I just don't like it. Yeah, it burns really easy and uh, it's terrible to clean Yeah. when it does burn and it's gonna burn. So we, we really rarely ever use this. We bring it along in the Forerunner just in case we need another frying pan, but uh, yeah, we hardly ever use it. So that leads us to this carbon steel one, which I bought last year, mm -hmm. uh, and we haven't used it much yet. Not much, but the times I have used it, I kind of like it. It's not as good as the cast iron, but uh, after it gets well seasoned, just like a cast iron pan, I think it does well. Yeah, and I like that the handle comes off. Yep. So. Yeah, so what do you think for this trip, for the bug? I think this one. I think so too. Because I hate this one yeah. and this one's too heavy. Yep, okay. Agree? So, yep, I agree. This is in. Okay, so what about the splatter cover? You usually like that because it doesn't get grease all over the back of the Forerunner? Uh, yeah, it's, it's too big, bulky. Nope, don't need it. So what about pot holders? Uh, pot holders, yeah, uh, two of them. We'll just take two. These are nice, of course, to prevent your fingers getting burnt to a crisp when you forget that the pan handle is hot. Uh, and also, when we're uh, packing, you put these in between different items and it really reduces the rattling in the back when you're driving down the road or the trail. So yeah, we'll take a couple of those. And these are our pots that we use. And We've had these forever and ever and ever. They're MSR, stainless steel. This is, what is this one here? Like a two quart or something? And a one quart? Something I, like something that. Something like that. Anyways, what's really nice about these is you can clamp them down, lock them closed, and they nest together like that, which is really cool. So let's talk about these cozies that you made years and years yeah, ago we when mentioned we backpacked. Those earlier. We talked about them earlier, and these keep food warm when you're cooking yeah. other items. So how they work, you put the pot, close it up, put the pot inside. So that insulates it from the ground and the sides. And then cover it just like your grandma's old toilet yeah, paper we're, oh, yeah remember those toilet paper covers <laughs> crocheted those were i think those were course crocheted but yeah and that insulates it and keeps it actually it will keep it cooking if it's hot enough if you take it off the fire it'll remain cooking for a while too but yeah for that single burner stove this works great uh, like we said you make your uh, macaroni and cheese in it take it off the fire put it aside with these cozies on then start up your steak in the pan. Yeah, that's good to go. Another great thing about this pan in particular is we take our stove and we put it in. And that's how we carry our stove. So the cozy things we'll take along with because uh, again, just like pot holders, when, we're, when they're packed away in the back, uh, we'll kind of keep the rattles down using these. Um, how about the pots? So, do we need both of them? Uh, it depends on what's on the menu. I think we do. Okay, because we're gonna have we can't nest them when we have the stove in right. here. So, so it would be, you know, that. Are we taking a coffee pot? No, no, that's coming up next. We'll talk about it, but no, we're not taking a coffee pot. Hmm. So it depends on what's on the menu. True. I think that maybe uh, just the frying pan in this bigger pot. Maybe the first trip. We'll see how it goes. Okay, we'll see. A, but for now, one pan. This is going in the pile that's going. So I already mentioned that we're not going to be taking a coffee pot with us. But we absolutely have to have coffee. Absolutely, yeah. So what we found, and we really love these, is 
these little um, coffee in a tea bag yeah. by Wildland Coffee. They are. It's very good. It's not like it used to be in the old days where where uh, these coffee like a tea bag really sucked. Well, these are really good. This is real coffee. It's not coffee crystals like Folgers <laughs> or Sanka or something. Yeah. And they have different um, different kinds. Like this one, you will love because it's extra dark roast mm -hmm. Brazilian coffee, and this one. I really like it's dark chocolate and caramel with coffee. Because oh, mm. I like my flavored coffee. Yeah, it's so, awful. Anyway. Yeah, our, our usual go to is a percolated coffee. Um, first thing, I drag myself out of the tent. First thing, uh, get this going. And by the time we have the tent down and packed, coffee's done. But these are a lot faster. Um, all we have to do is really heat up uh, water in, in that pot. And just to just heat it up, you don't have to keep boiling it like a percolator, you know, to percolate the coffee. Just get it hot and then put these bags in there, and it's a lot faster and a lot less weight in bulk. This is kind of bulky and it rattles when you're driving down the road. Easy cleanup, yeah, easy cleanup. Wildland coffee, we like it. Next, let's talk about sinks. Um, we need sinks to need, wash yeah, our dishes, got to have something. Uh, this one we use in our Forerunner. I love it. It's sturdy and it folds down flat, mm -hmm. so it's convenient. Yeah. I use it to carry things around too sometimes. Um, just a handy little thing, but a little bulky. A little bulky. Uh, we have the Sea to Summit sink, which folds down to this yeah. size and zips up. It's very convenient. I don't love it. It's kind of flimsy and it works. kind of once a pain get, in the ass when you're trying to do dishes. Yeah, but. once you get water in it, I mean, there's a there's a hard wire or something along the rim here. So once you get water in it, it stands up. And uh, yeah, it works. What's really nice is it compacts down, like Mary said, into this little teeny tiny thing. And it's maybe a little bit less volume is that, but there's still plenty of volume there. It's 10 liters. 10 liters. Yep. Woohoo! Uh, so what do you think on that? Uh, uh, just for I convenience. I have an idea. I have an idea. There's your sink right there. Remember? We're going to have them along anyways. No. No? All right. That's too big. Okay. That, is a, that would be a big sink. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what do you think? Uh, this does compact down and it does fit in the front runner box. Yeah, do you think we could get away with using that? I would prefer that. But I mean for can, uh, for uh, space, and, space, space and weight. Space, I would, no, no, no. I hate this one. Well, let's take this one then. Okay. All right, this one goes. So for kitchen cleanup, uh, we like to take a sponge scrubby. Mm -hmm. It dries out pretty quickly, keeps our pans clean. Yeah, if it's not dry, you can always put it in a Ziploc bag. Or hang it from a little. Yeah, what's, what we do sometimes, we actually will put a clothesline up in the back of the foreign runner, in the back, across, and we'll hang our dish towels and, and this thing on that. And while we're driving, windows are usually down, it dries really fast. Our little clothesline in the back of the truck. Uh, we have a little bottle that we keep um, dish soap in and we keep it in a Ziploc bag. Yep. We don't take the whole bunch. No, just... there's no, no sense in taking a big bottle. And also a, a tip, put it in two Ziploc bags. Never <laughs> yes. trust just one <laughs> Ziploc bag because eventually this lid's going to get loose and this soap is going to go everywhere. So double Ziploc bag that. Right. Uh, we like to take dish towel. This is like a microfiber. They dry really quickly. Yep. Uh, we've always had these little chamois uh, kind of dry towel yeah. things. Yeah, that, they work all right. Mm. Yeah, they dry fast. They do. Uh, paper towels. Look how big that is, though. I mean, you have to have paper towels, sure, but look how big that is. It's This is made for putting in a holder in your kitchen. Now, I suggest... And you know, people, that you have a whole stack of party napkins. Oh, that's true. In your in your cupboard um, for you know those parties where nobody shows up. 
That's sad. Nobody shows up. I think <laughs> I think you just buy too many. You do and... buy way too many, or the cars and coffee that nobody shows up for. Uh. That you, yeah, you know. So you, you look in your cupboard. I know you have this, a bunch of these, and this will go in a Ziploc, nice and square. It'll pack a lot better. But I am not giving up toilet paper. Oh God, no, no. In I fact, am not using napkins. In fact, depending on how long the trip is, take more than what you think you need. Never ever trust that the outhouse is gonna to have toilet paper in it. Right. Always take toilet paper. And with this, it can fold in. I'm not yeah. gonna not gonna do it with this one, you but can you it can smash it down. And put it in a Ziploc bag. Yeah. I would say take two rolls. It's light. Okay. Yeah, you don't take chances there. Right. <laughs> um, we do like to take a bag of bags. A bag of bags. I, that sounds weird. But there's always, you always have a need yes. for a garbage and, and it bag. Doesn't, it doesn't weigh hardly anything. Yeah, we uh, have kitchen sized garbage bags. We Ziploc have bags. Ziplocs for leftovers and the really smelly food that you don't want the animals smelling at night. Um, dog yeah, poop bags. Yeah, dog poop bags. bags uh, you know, the grocery store bags. But yeah, and this, that compresses down. So yeah, this is in, and all this is in. And not and the toilet those, paper. but these. There. So now we're on to utensils. utensils. Uh, obviously, we need forks and spoons to eat our food with. Yep, put it in the box. Um, as far as knives, we don't we don't need a butter knife. You know, a regular butter knife. So we only really need one. We can share a sharp knife. Um, we always take, this is all stuff we take in the Forerunner, by the way. And this is, this is a, a nice uh, chopping knife, but as you can see, it's way too big. Um, this is a little paring knife that I kind of like. I kind of like those. Uh, the open L? Open L knives. Those are nice too. I would prefer I we take that. I have one out here that I can show you, but. I would prefer we take that. This is kind of stubby. Okay. All right. Yeah. Let's. Okay. We'll make a note of that. And this is dirty. I got to take it in the house. And I, did, I it. saw that. I didn't want to say anything, but that's kind of nasty. <laughs> okay. So these these knives are out. Uh, what an open L knife is? It's a it's a high carbon steel little pocket knife. It sharpens up really sharp. Very very sharp. And uh, yeah, they're cheap. Nice. Yep. Okay. Next, can openers. Uh, I'm old school. I love this can opener. I can't stand those. I love it. But I hate using these. But look at the size difference. Well, so, these hardly ever, they, they wear out and they don't work. I know, but I, these are faster and everything, take a lot less effort. But yeah, size wise, that's out. This is in. Well, you could get the smaller twisty ones and compromise. Yeah, I don't want to buy anything. We'll just use, use what we have. Okay. Next. All kinds of stuff. Uh, a big spoon. I like that because it folds down. You can yeah, use it, it for a measuring like cup. Yep. Yeah. It even has lines inside here to tell you uh, what the volume is. Or a serving utensil. Yeah. Uh, what do you think? Let's take it. Spatula. This the spatula we've had I forever. Love that spatula. I think we ended up melting or burning the handle off at one point, and uh, and I think it came from my parents' house, so it's yeah, really it's, old. This is probably fifty years old. So I just bent the handle, to make a little stubby handle that's easy to hold on to, and man, we've been using this for camping for ever. That's got to go. That's got to go, go with us. Oh yeah, that's yeah. a staple. There's, yeah. I don't like the little plastic ones. They don't work. No, they don't work one. at all. Okay. Has to be metal. Tongs. You think we need tongs? Uh, normally we do, but look how big they are. Yeah, we don't uh, need those. Yeah, we don't need them. Whisk. No, fork will work just fine. Okay. Um, wine cork. I don't drink wine, so this one's yours. Oh, well, it's actually yours because if we take this little one, you know who's going to end up having to pull out the cork every single True. time. True. Show them how that works. Put the handle in there. Other way. See who uses it. So it's really compact. So you twist it, but then you have to pull it out. Yeah, this one here has the plunger. Yeah. 
Um, but again, look at the size difference. Yep. So. So you'll be pulling corks I guess for so. me. Just don't drink as much wine. Seasoning. Seasoning, salt and pepper is all we need. Um, if we need anything else for a, a recipe, we'll just put it in a little Ziploc baggie. Works for me. And just take what we need. Works for me. Here's pepper. We'll have to bring salt out. But that's this celery is, salt. Yeah. Or celery seed for yeah. hot dogs, yeah. Chicago dogs. Yeah, okay. we'll have to get some salt. Remember, put that on our list. Lighters. Lighters. This is what we use all the time uh, when we're camping out of the Forerunner. There's uh, lighters like this, but look at the size difference. You're going to be burning the hair off your fingers. I know it. But, and we're going to take two because one is going to fail for sure. What else we got? That's it. No, we have to go find something else. Next. Next. So next we have first aid. Yeah, we carry both of these in the Forerunner when we go. This is what we call uh, the Boo Boo Kit. It's got some Tylenol uh, and all you know simple medicines like that, band aids, bandages, Pepto Bismol. Yeah, you know all the normal day-to-day -day kind of injuries. This is more of a trauma kit. This uh, has a couple of tourniquets in it, um, big bleeder pads, pads, and a lot of uh, uh, big injury stuff, along with band-aids and everything else. We never get into this. We're always into this because we're accident prone. Well, you are anyways. <laughs> but. Uh, I think on this trip, because this one here is pretty heavy, there's a lot packed in here. So on this trip, I think we'll get by with just this. In fact, we could probably get by with half of that. Half of this. We do have one, and I forgot to bring it out here in the garage, but we do have one that's literally half this size, and it doesn't have much in it, just some gauze, some tape, the band-aids, you know, the simple Tylenol. stuff. Tylenol. But yeah, I think that uh, we'll take this one. Right? Sounds you good. You agree? I agree. Okay. A hatchet and a, I think you have to push the yellow thing. Don't hurt yourself. Hatchet and a saw. Uh, oh God, no, 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 no. We'll definitely need the trauma kit if you bring that thing with. Um, these things are very, these, this, these are the most dangerous items you could ever bring on your camping trip. Uh, well, and they're not the most dangerous you could ever bring. You yes, could, no. More you could bring a gun. No. You could bring No. a harpoon. No, no, these are, these are far more dangerous than, than even a firearm. Uh, a saw, we don't, we, we use it once in a while, mostly for uh, cutting limbs out of the way so we can get our vehicle through, but it's bulky and we don't need it. A hatchet, I'm kind of, uh, I'm kind of on the fence with the hatchet. A uh, hatchet for our purposes would, would do two things. We could chop wood into smaller pieces, get a fire going, and we can use it to pound in tent stakes. But this is heavy. This is really heavy. I don't think we should take it. You know my feelings about it. Yeah, I know, you cut your damn hand off. She almost did once with a hatchet. So yeah, we don't need these. Yeah, just put those back in the Forerunner. Okay, next up is something very essential. My water bottle. Yeah. Now, I drink at least two of these a day. No so wonder you're peeing all. She, so we have to stop to pee every five, 10 miles. So now we know why. Bringing a water bottle is essential to me. Yeah, I, I agree. And I have my own water bottle too. But uh, what I'm getting to is rain gear. Oh, okay. Yes. Uh, and in here, in this little backpack is our rain gear, tops and bottoms. And in this, we can also put our first aid kit. So we always have that handy. The reason why we put it in a little backpack like this is uh, in case we want to do a side hike. We want to stop someplace, do a little hike, but it looks like it's going to rain. So we'll just grab this out of the back and it's really convenient. So first aid kit should go in here and we can also fit maybe not that big behemoth water bottle in here, but a couple smaller water bottles will fit. Hmm. So this is going. 
And I suppose the water. <laughs> like you have a choice. So other than clothes and food, this is everything. This is all we need. Now that we've got our gear reduced down to the bare minimum, what are we going to pack it in and how are we going to store it in the bug? Well, we have a lot of these front liner boxes or fr front, fr front what, what, runner front runner boxes. So we'll use them. Um, I'm, I'm not really sure yet how we're going to do it or what exactly we're going to use to consolidate all this. Uh, I do have some creative, unique ideas floating around, banging around up here. You always do. Uh, so, yeah, so that'll be another video showing how we do that. And we're also going to be putting a refrigerator in here, a little uh, 20 liter, uh, dual battery, a uh, bunch of stuff with this thing. So be sure to subscribe to the channel. Please. Hit that uh, bell notification so you know when we do upload the video. And thank you Thanks very for much watching. for watching. Oh, hit us up on Instagram and Facebook too.